Good afternoon, Saitlanders. How are you? We hope that you're well. Um, yesterday, three ladies came to visit me. Um, I'm in my early 50s. I suppose that the one lady was in her early 60s. And her mom and her mom's sister, that is to say her aunt. So they would have been in their 80s. Indeed, the one lady told me that she's 80-something. And I have to say, they look, those two elderly ladies, sure. They look like they've got a lot of life left in them. Um, good for you, ladies. Very good for you. Anyway, I... Uh, one of the ladies passed a sort of a compliment and I said to her, yeah, thank you very much. That's nice of you. But the, the other people who, who don't like me, you know, and it's just life. That's okay. <clears throat> and she said, no, no, no. We all know that. She said, in fact, when I first introduced my mom, who was sitting next to her, to you, I said to her, mom, just listen what the man has to say and what pay him no attention or just a, I can't remember quite a, whatever it was it was quite blunt so I was put in my place boom there and then anyway my dog Judith was with us and she's oh she's a handful but she's a good dog I like her I'm I'm taking a liking to her um and uh she's a very valuable and special dog so I must but we had a little dispute over how you handle dogs because their policy is you must love all dogs whereas my policy is bad dogs are bad dogs like bad people are bad people and bad snakes are bad snakes Gah. and i said to them <laughs> quite pointedly because i'm cheeky i said to the the younger lady um, they just to give you a sense of context, they came to ask me for some advice. They're interested in investing in property, and we'll get to that in a moment. And uh, I said to this lady, "Well, it seems to me that some people don't have mothers, and her mother's sitting next to her, that teach them from a young age never to interfere with other people's animals. They are not yours, which is how we were brought up. You didn't pet dogs and cats and." make pals with them they've got nothing to do with you leave them alone the, i mean that was strict with us and i'm sure it was strict with all of my friends too because i don't remember friends getting involved with other people's dogs like you know fawning all over them the way people seem to fawn over my dogs in this store and that's just a fact no offense to any funder clover but i don't understand it at all anyway so i said to the ladies um I'm not Elizabeth Taylor. This is a dog. It's not my child. That nonsense, no ways. What a load of rubbish. A dog is a surrogate for a child, for pity's sake. <clears throat> anyway, we ended up having a lovely time. It was thoroughly enjoyable. And um, now to the point. These ladies have arrived at the conclusion or at the idea that there's just no point in being anywhere except in a safe zone like why why would you want to be in georgia muscle bay as random examples if not for the work if not for the business if not for the shopping if you're a shopaholic or whatever compulsively you have to <clears throat> if you could live in a cleaner neater nicer place safer and this is the vital thing this is the point that I, I made to them and I had to 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 repeat myself two or three times to find the correct words to say it well we're better to ride out the storm that is coming would you, if you accept that there's a storm coming, it appears as if World War III is emerging in Ukraine. 
it appears as if the United States of America is hell-bent on provoking uh, or causing a war in um, or over Taiwan. ESCOM, would you rather deal with ESCOM here or in Johannesburg? And I said to them, I made it very clear, and I've said this to people on many occasions, so many occasions in recent years that people have come here and have contacted Andre Kutsia at Opidek, Andre Kutsia, who is von Seitlotner's Disciplina, and he has had other roles too, and said to him, uh, it, do you think uh, um, uh, it would be possible to meet Simon? And then, you know, on so, I've met so many people and I've always said the same thing. There is no guarantee that van der Kloof is going to be safe. And there are no guarantees in war. We may have to relinquish van der Kloof. We may be pushed back from Gharib Dam. We may not be hold on. Be, oh, sorry, I was making the point. I beg your pardon. I've said it so many times to so many people that it is practically an open secret. And so I'm not hesitant about saying it here. <clears throat> Although it will make some people uncomfortable. But this is real life in the real world. If you are uncomfortable with the idea of investing money in a perceived safe or safer area and then losing it, you are not living in reality. You just aren't. War is a terrible thing. I've never been in, so I was in the army, but you know, who really saw content? Who really, really actually saw anything apart from the special forces and some others? <clears throat> so I've never seen somebody's leg shot off and then shrieking blue murder for their mom while they die. But I have the talent of sociological perspective, or you could call it sympathy, if you like. Mm, empathy. We could debate the three, the, the three phrases all day long. I'm quite good. I don't say I'm the best. I'm not a woman, for instance. You know, women have this in spades. But I'm able to, for instance, watch, as you know, if you've followed many of my videos, many, 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 do many hours of research. I've got uh, encyclopedias here that coming out of my ears and, and encyclopedic type books that speak about these things, about the worst times in human history, what it involved. And I have an ability to appreciate it even though i wasn't there not fully appreciate it it's not the same thing i do not have one one hundredth the appreciation of warfare that vainon Dutoy does but i am able to examine these things and say well that means that that is real even though it makes me uncomfortable makes me want to put this book down and i tell you that in circumstances of war, we may be up, down, all around, anything could happen. As I was telling my dear, dear friend, to whom I owe so very much the other day, I was chatting to she and her husband, and I said to her, Nobody, nobody is going to take one step backwards because we're all so brave until a mortar lands in our neighbor's back garden. Then we'll be the first. We'll be elbowing one another out of the way and later making excuses for it. No, I didn't really mean to bump her over. It wasn't what actually happened was I tripped and then I was. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll become human beings. <clears throat> 
But where would you rather sit between now and then? There is no guarantee, not in war, not in how things really happen and how they really turn out and how they really transpire. Have you ever watched, uh, well, if you're of my age, then presumably you have, <coughs> especially if you're Afrikaans speaking. The BBC 30, 28 part series plus additional, what, 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 a <coughs> couple of uh, episodes, 30 parts, um, spectacular documentary on war from the mid 70s. It aired in Afrikaans, dubbed on SABC at a time when there was so little television that we were all television addicts because there was only whatever number of hours a day of it. The first few episodes and some of the subsequent episodes, because they kind of cover, let's say, the phony walks. So it's like two episodes. And then they'll go on to, uh, I don't know, campaign in France. And they begin... So that here will be 1936, and then I'll go to 1939. And here will be 1937 to 1940, roughly. So throughout this thing, almost to the middle, every so often you get brought back to the beginning of the story. Because we're now covering this aspect. So this aspect, whatever it may be, the, uh, the, the war in the Pacific, the war in North Africa... Uh, Italy, um, the Eastern Front, whatever. Right now we have to tell this aspect of this whole tale again from the beginning. And over and over and over and over and over and over again you hear in these repeated introductions about how people expected it to happen one way. Or they planned for it to happen one way. They prepared for it to happen one way. They were convinced it was going to happen one way. And it happened seven other ways. It happened way number two. And just as I thought, right, this is the deal. Vroom, history, life, warfare, the enemy, everything changed it to number three. And number this is, this is known as the vicissitudes of war. The changes that the ineluctable changes, the changes you can't avoid. Changes in circumstance, that which surrounds us, that lead to changes of condition. Our condition. I'm not saying sell up your farm and move to Uppington, move to Douglas, move to Priska, move to Van der Kloof. As these ladies said, they didn't want to go to Uppington for a, a, a preference of their own. And they didn't want to go there and they didn't want, and this was the place that they wanted to come to. So I said to them, come, but if we get a bloody nose here and lose everything you understand that's the way it is they said yeah 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 we get that part and in fact they have a plan b good for them clever girls i'm not saying sell your farm i'm not saying you sell your business I am saying, all things being equal, if you are not compelled to be in Bloemfontein, Durban, Port Elizabeth, East London, Peter Maritzburg, um, uh, Wittbank, Petersburg, Pretoria, Johannesburg, Kempton Park, Porch of Struem. All things being equal. If you don't have to be there, why would you ride out the difficulties that are fast approaching there as opposed to here?
It's foolishness. All things being equal. If you're a woman and if you're a man, and you're inordinately attached to your children, that's not all things being equal. Now, that changes the formula. It changes the mathematics sum. If you have to be there for an income, it changes everything. But all things being equal. And again, if it's going to cost you money to come here, money that you don't have, then all things are not equal. <coughs> you and you alone can justify spending the money if it's going to cost you money that you don't have or that you can't replenish to come here. You may say, oh, the move is going to cost me 500,000 Rand because I live in, um, I live in, what's the suburb in Johannesburg? Um, man, I used to live there. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, Bears Valley. That, but that's not the right name. I'm looking for something else, but it's next door. And uh, I bought this house in 1985, and uh, now it's worth nothing. Uh, I've got to get a house down there. This house is paid off. That house is going to cost me money. I'm just going to go backwards. Okay, if you want to remain living in Bears Valley, you have my deepest sympathies. Really, sincerely. Heartfelt sympathies. Uh, my, my heart pains for you. I cannot imagine what it must be like to be trapped in a part of the world that is dangerous and not be able to leave because you don't have the money or it's going to cost you you know, some significant portion of your pension. And you're going to be worse off when you get here. So nobody is saying anything except all things being equal. In other words, if all of the other considerations cancel one another out. I just thought I would share that story with you because it's a, it's a thing worth thinking about. And that conversation, that lunch with those ladies uh, reminded me of conversations and considerations and ideas that have perhaps not been at the top of my mind for some time. That big thing of where do I go? Give me your advice. What do you think? We're not sure. Please help us. <clears throat> anyway, I think that those ladies are going to be A-OK. -okay. They've, they've got their, their mental ducks in a row. And they're going to figure it out just, just well. Yeah, that's that. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please like, share and subscribe. And... From my heart I say to you, may God bless you for the, the dimming times into which we are now going. Bye-bye.